Sharon, Jamie, and Lucy. Oh, <laughs> Lucy's here today. <laughs> Lucy wants to get in on the action. Yeah, she always does. And we are here today for some cruise talk Q and A. Hey, you can't. <laughs> hey, you don't want to be in the cruise talk Q and A. You go lay down. We come on. Oh my gosh. All right, okay. so here we are, cruise talk Q and A time. That's right. Well, usually we get a lot of comments. Um, some on YouTube. We get a lot of comments on my blog. We also get a lot of emails, and so we are here today to kind of answer and Facebook Facebook messages don't as well. Facebook. So we are here today to just answer a lot of the questions that we have gotten in the last week or a few days, I guess. So. All right, cool. Oh, first off, before we get started, Jamie is going to explain a little more. We had a couple questions about how you purchased Carnival gift cards or any, actually, well, or Royal Caribbean gift cards too. They have the two on the Verizon website. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, a lot so, of questions about the Verizon deal. So we were talking in our last video about... Um, saving 10% on your cruise um, and how do you do that and some people not you know not really sure how it works so uh, if you have Verizon as your phone service your wireless service or whatever go to their website log into the page when you go to the my Verizon section you can click on or you'll see a section that says uh, my rewards and those are like reward points that you built up and if you click on that it'll say to redeem your rewards and you can redeem your rewards by um, you know, bidding on auctions or buying gift cards and things like that. Well, if you go into the travel uh, section of the gift card options, that's where you may find some uh, some gift cards for Carnival and Royal Caribbean. Now, I do want to say this, um, and I don't know how many people know this, but I just found out today yeah, that the out. Verizon program that they're running now for rewards is going to be ending November 1st, and then any uh, rewards you know that you've had built up are gonna go away as they begin a new um, loyalty program. So uh, um, when I looked today, the Carnival gift cards were sold out um, and there were no Royal Caribbean, but they may still kick them back in again before this program ends. So I just check every yeah, day. Keep an eye on that and take advantage of it. It comes around. Um, it's been popular for a while. A lot of people talking about it. And um, I'm not sure if, uh, if Carnival is gonna get back into it again before November 1st, but hopefully they do. Yeah. And if they do, you want to get in on that deal and save and, yourself 10%. And we're not sure what the November 1st is going to bring as far as the rewards. Yeah, they're the going to have a new program. thing called Verizon Up, and I'm not sure so what it, it's going to be yeah, about. It may and still have some gift cards we'll as well. Happens. We're not sure yet. So So that's a quick update on uh, saving 10% buying Verizon uh, discounted uh, cruising gift cards. Right. So there you have it. All right, so okay. what's next? So let's get on with a few questions here. Okay, okay. who's the first question first from? First question is from Glowtang. Glowtang, all right, okay. let's do this. Okay. The question is, hi, I just booked this hotel because of your vlog. I was originally booked downtown. May I ask how you got from the hotel to the cruise port? Was that also a free shuttle or was the shuttle only from the airport? If not, may I ask how much the shuttle cost from the hotel to the airport? I am cruising solo and I like to have all information before I cruise. Good okay. question, Glutain. This is referring to our Vista cruise um, leaving out of Miami last March. Okay, so there is a free airport shuttle. The hotel does offer a ride to the port for $10 per person. Which, hold on, was that uh, Hampton Inn? That was the Hampton Inn okay. Blue Lagoon. Let me okay. say that. Uh, the hotel also, we took a taxi to the port. It was about $40. Um, to the port but they do have the shuttle for ten dollars per person and it probably just depends how many people are in your party because if you have um four to five people in your party it, it doesn't necessarily pay you to take the, sh the airport the hotel hotel shuttle uh, but for if you're going solo it definitely does that's the way to go or if you want to get to the port a little earlier and not wait for the shuttle because they are designated times usually Mm -hmm. then you may want to take a taxi as well. But it's either $10 per person for the shuttle, or you can take a taxi for about $40, maybe a tip plus tip or so we paid for yeah. that. Um, we, we usually go with a taxi because, you know, Sharon mentioned shuttles are usually set up at certain times. Right. The first shuttle may not head over there till 10 o'clock, 1030. Um, you're jamming into a shuttle right. with 20 other people that are waiting. Next thing you know, you got to wait for two or three shuttles later. So for us, we'll spend the money, get a taxi, get there when we want, and yeah. we're rolling. So, 
That's there you go. There you have it. Next question is from Jackson Gaming HD. Jackson Gaming oh, HD. Oh, this is a question for you, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you win in the casino and you have chips, when can you cash them out? Um I'm not sure why you would assume that I would know about the casino. Well, you're the casino player in the family. Um, all right, so uh, so first off, the casino is like any other land-based casino. Atlantic City, Vegas, like that. It's going to have a selection of different games you can play, and all the games are going to pay out with chips, except um, uh, the um, the slot games are usually going to pay out onto uh, your, your sale and sign card. You almost get like a coupon with the dollar amount. But to answer the question... You can go anytime to cash out your chips, but at the end of the cruise on the last night, once the casino closes, you have to have cashed out your chips and gotten cash from them. If you forget, you go back to your room, you fall asleep, you eat too much buffet late night or something, and the wake, you wake up the next morning and you still have casino <laughs> chips, you are, I think the term is S-O-L. Yeah. Um, you will be going home with those chips because once the casino closes, you're out. So cash them in prior to the casino closing on the last night. What else we got? Go. Okay, next is a, this was from actually my blog, a question from a comment from the blog, from Carol Young. Carol, lovely name, my mother, also named Carol. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going on a, the, oh, I'm going on the same cruise soon and was wondering, did you exchange dollars for pesos or did you pay in American dollars? She's referring to our Mexican Riviera cruise on the Miracle. Okay. We actually use American dollars going to Mexico. Um, you can use pesos if you like. Um, we just use the our American you know, American dollars. There's really no reason to change to pesos there. Um, you just need to make sure that the peso to dollar rate usually um, that you're not, I guess, kind of getting taken a little bit. They might get taken for a ride. Yeah, I mean, they're usually it, yeah. pretty good. I actually have. I don't know if you can see. You probably won't be able to see it, but I have an app on my phone called Dollars. To pesos and you you really probably can't see it but it you actually you actually put in the dollars there and it will I don't know if you can see it and it will tell you how many pesos or you can do it opposite and um, that's just a quick way to kind of figure out especially sometimes the restaurants there will charge you in pesos as well and, and you're like oh my god you know um, well, the five, pesos, 500 pesos peso sounds really so expensive not, yeah. like 500 pesos is only uh, it's not that much no yeah. it's like 17 to to $1. Right well, you got to keep an eye on it because the exchange rate can get crazy. Rate. But yeah, if you're if you're in the port or something like that, you may just haggle and use American dollars yeah. and you can haggle with the uh, with the dollars and get, you know, save a little bit of money. But Sharon that, made a good point. If yeah, you're I'm eating, sure. you're going to restaurants, places where not only do the cruise people go, but people that are visiting because if you're if you're just traveling into Mexico, uh, you're going to convert your money. Um, but if you're just there for the day, maybe right. not worth uh, the trouble of doing it. Sometimes they'll give you American um, change back and also once in a while they'll actually give you pesos back too so just watch that if you're getting a lot of change back you may not want to get a lot of pesos back mm -hmm. so you know if a few maybe for a souvenir but yes. you don't want to get a ton of them back because then you can't use them so but be aware of the exchange rate and and don't be afraid to ask how much it is in pesos mm -hmm. and do the math yourself because right. I have read where people um, there are places where even though the rate will fluctuate they stay at like a same like 10 to 1 average ratio because yeah. most uh, travelers don't pay attention to that. Yeah, so, uh, some of the restaurants are know, like that there. Yeah, just be familiar with the exchange rate, do the math, and usually you can come out ahead and uh, make sure you don't get uh, taken for a little bit of a ride there. Okay, next question from Erica Dorsey. What hotel did you stay at in Miami? December will be my first cruise and unsure of hotels. Okay, she's referring to our Vista Cruise out of Miami, our recent one. We actually stayed at the Hampton Inn Blue Lagoon. It was by the airport pre-cruise. Um, on post-cruise, we actually stayed at the Hilton Blue Lagoon, mm -hmm. which was right by the airport as well. Um, but I think she's mostly talking about pre-cruise. The Hampton, the Hilton is very nice, but it's a little off the path a little bit, and there's not a lot close by if you need to walk to get some things before, but it's a very, very nice hotel. Um, the Hampton Inn is great for a pre-cruise stay. They offer the included breakfast. There's a lot of things within walking distance. There's a, was it Publix? A grocery store right across the street. Oh, yeah, right across the street. Where you can go get your wine if you want to take on the ship. Also, there's a liquor store right next door as well. We noticed after we got our mm -hmm. wine at this grocery store for um, and there's a lot of little fast food and little 
places to eat around there. There's also a yeah, CVS. CVS and, and a Walgreens right, right on yeah. the two corners. So everything within yes. walking distance is a great location. The hotel was clean. It was, you know, great for just a night pre-cruise. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they also do offer a airport, free airport shuttle. Not to the port, but a free airport shuttle. Yeah. So, there you go. Well, um, awesome. we have stayed before, uh, just on a little side note, in Miami. Haven't we stayed uh, at the, like the Holiday Inn right we down by the port? We have, down by the port. That's a good one, too. Um, if you're into some just, nightlife and some activity and stuff and going out the night before, um, you can stay port, closer maybe. to the port yeah. and there might be some action down there. For us, we're just looking for a good place, good price, good yeah. breakfast. It probably depends, too, when, when you're flying in, if you're going to be flying in, you're going to be spending the whole day yeah. um, versus, you know, flying in late. Um, but we've stayed at a few different places in Miami on different occasions, and, mm -hmm. and you know, we just, we try a few. Yeah. It, it, this was a great pre-cruise day. Yeah, for us at Hampton, it was real nice. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm sorry. I, I know I get sidetracked <laughs> easy. Sharon always yells at me about it. Next question. <laughs> okay, Rob Hutchins. He sent us an email. We are going on the Carnival Magic in November and was wondering how much money we should bring for the casino. We probably, oh, we will probably go to the casino three to four nights out of our cruise. All right, so I mentioned That's earlier. That's a hard one. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I taking the casino <laughs> Yeah, you're again? taking that More one. More casino questions. <laughs> um, I mentioned earlier, so the casino is going to have, there's going to be a couple of crap tables, a couple of roulette tables, um, some blackjack. Uh, maybe some you know Caribbean stud poker and some stuff like that, and then of course all the the slot machines. Um, but I mean a question like that, you really go with what you can lose. You know I usually uh, kick and plead and beg to get about a hundred dollar a day allowance, and um, you know more often than not that allowance is gone by the end of the week. But there are occasions where I can do a little bit on the first couple times I go. I try not to gamble the first night. I just feel like that's the worst night to do it. Um, and I'll do it sometimes in the sea days and stuff like that. So, I mean, whatever you can afford to lose is, is a good way to go. Um, and also, you have luck too, with like on the odd kind of like afternoons and stuff, kind of odd times that yeah, you don't normally go. Like yeah, night I'll go like late morning before lunch or after lunch while Sharon's busy doing something. And, um, and, and I can do well as opposed to the, you know, after dinner and at nighttime when the place is just wild and crazy and packed. And also one thing to consider is depends on what ship you're going. Um, some of the older ships will have a lower minimum, like uh, like they might have a five dollar minimum uh, bet. But if you go on some of the newer ships, like we're going on the Breeze soon, and I'm and I'm, I'm, I know from the last time that they're going to have a ten dollar minimum bet, blackjack, roulette, stuff like that. So that could play a part in it as well. Newer ship, a little more money, you know, right. to to gamble with. So there's a good little tip for you. Okay, next we have we received an email from Kathy Gerber. She said, we, w we have cruised twice before without our kids. We are planning a cruise for next summer and planning to bring our kids 10, 7, and 3. Ooh. What cruise line and ships would you recommend with kids these ages? And please don't mention Disney. It is way out of our price range. I hear you. Also, we live in Texas, so a, a closed port would be great. Okay. So, so gals. So... Probably your best bet out of Galveston, if that's where you're thinking, is um, Royal Caribbean has a great ship, Liberty of the Seas. It has the water park, you know, great some great options for kids. It has um, a good adventure, the adventure club for the kids. It also has a rock climbing wall. Um, it's great. Another mm -hmm. great option with Carnival is the Carnival Breeze. It is their next to newest ship and it has a great water park it has a thrill theater it has the ropes course that goes around it has a lot of a lot of great features for kids too um so either one of those you can't go wrong with kids also if you wanted to take a little drive over to new orleans that's not too far from texas i guess that's the next closest port mm -hmm. um there is the carnival dream as well it's the same setup as the breeze but it was the original um, of the dream class and then the breeze is kind of a uh, the third one of that dream class so and they both the breeze and the dream both have all have been recently updated as well so, uh, hey that sounds like Kathy um, and Kathy you can leave a comment for us maybe and answer the question sounds like this might be the first time bringing the kids then yeah, after is, you guys have gone before yeah. so um, so either one of those would be great and I might recommend a tremendous website with some great information oh, on Facebook if you have Facebook 
search a website or uh, a website, a page on Facebook or a group called Cruising Carnival with Kids. Yes. Um, Sharon doesn't talk about it a lot. Uh, but, That's um, my group. But it's, it's a page. It's a group that she started a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. There's just about almost 5,000 members in it now. And it's, and it's dedicating to cruising, cruising with, with children kids. and answering yes. questions. She goes out of her way to minimize outside advertising and yeah. spam and all that kind yeah, of shenanigans. Yeah, um, do any... Like yeah, she, she, she it's doesn't just strictly, advertise her, her, just, her travel yeah. business through that page. It's strictly uh, just questions, comments, mm-hmm. answers from other fellow cruisers with kids. Um, it's a great resource if you're cruising with kids. Um, and there's about 5,000 members there now, so there yeah. gets a lot of activity. And it's pretty neat because um, every one of those members has been approved by Sharon. Everyone clicks to join. Mm-hmm. She'll take a look at who the person well, is, I, make yeah, sure I, there, there's I'm nothing really shady going on. I'm really cautious about who uh, I... Who is in that in group? There. Because since it is cruising with kids, and people do post pictures, cruising with their kids, and you know a lot of pictures and just fun stuff people like to, to look yeah. at from their cruises. Um, and I just don't want yeah want anything weird. So I'm just really cautious about who you know. Sure, but check out that that, that Facebook that group, group, Kathy, and so. you will get a million yeah. questions answered. You post one question, you'll probably get 20, 30 responses right. in like the first day. It's yeah. awesome. Okay, next we have Linda Tabers. Linda! <laughs> Let's see. We are leaving on our first cruise on the Carnival Dream, and I was wondering, what do most people wear on Embarkation Day? I was so confused on what to wear. Also, I got a new dress at JCPenney's to wear on formal night. Do you think this will be okay? I know I'm a first-time cruiser, but I don't want to look like one. Oh, <laughs> oh I actually was going to put a picture I forgot I was going to print out the picture out of her dress and show you um, but it is a really nice burgundy cocktail dress and Linda it's perfect for a formal night you will look great in it it's a the perfect dress do you remember the one I wore on our first cruise on imbrication oh, I think I wore uh, like some hiking boots yeah, and denim first jeans cruises, and a denim jacket it was definitely a Canadian or uh, Canadian tuxedo. I should, have, I should post sometime our picture of our very first cruise several years ago. If we, we look several. at that now, I mean, we just laugh. We yeah. looked so funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we just looked so different. Day. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, it, we looked ridiculous now when I think about it. <coughs> but anyways, um, anything is fine. Embarkation day, just stay casual. You can wear anything from shorts and a t-shirt to a sundress to capris to pants. Yes. <laughs> when you get on the, the any, first any, night in the dining room, just, there's no rules casual. and there's no expectation because people are, there are some people still getting their luggage as you get towards five, six, seven o'clock at night yeah. for dinner. So wear something comfortable. We usually bring in our carry-on a change of clothes just in case we get a spill right. in the buffet <laughs> or something like that. Something crazy happens. Also. So that's a backup yeah. plan that we And also, have. if you might want to use the pool the first day too, bring a swimsuit in your carry-on because you may not have your luggage or, you know, some people even wear their swimsuits on embarkation under their clothes as well. Yeah. So it, it's then very we can casual. Hop in the pool, not, get some sun. Yeah. You'll fit right in. Don't worry about it. Yes. So. Definitely. Definitely. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. Next question. Sandy Walters. We just booked an Alaskan cruise for next summer on Princess Cruise Lines. Do you think my phone will take good enough pictures or do I need to invest in a nicer camera? That's the first part of the question. Second question is also, is there anything you took on your Alaska cruise that you don't normally bring on other cruises that you found useful? Well, let's see, you, that, let's stand to the second one first. We brought binoculars. You want to bring binoculars, those mm-hmm. will be great. Um, yes. An umbrella, maybe, hat, gloves, rain jacket, and just layers. Yeah. Basically, those are, there's really nothing else I don't think. And I actually, one thing that came in handy on our Alaska, Alaskan cruise was um, suntan lotion. Oh, yeah. We yeah, actually brought some work. because we assumed that if we're out, we might get, you know, sunburn on the nose, you know, if there's a lot of snow, we're thinking the reflection of the sun. Well, it turned out we were, I was wearing tank yeah. tops and yeah. uh you never and know how the lotion going. because for our cruise it was sunny and beautiful right. and warm uh unseasonably warm and it was wild so uh yeah so bring um, a little sun yeah so bring that Sun's even if green. it's cold you might still need a little bit of that yeah especially uh, from the face. to protect yeah. from the sun and as far as the camera goes that's really kind of a personal preference i will just say you know you can take amazing pictures on cell phones now um you will be fine using your cell phone, but it just depends on 
how much you're really into photography, how much you're really into yeah. the pictures. And how good your cell phone is, because a lot but, of the great pictures are a little distance away. Mm -hmm. um, like we were taking pictures of the glaciers yeah. uh, when we're on the back of the ship. So if you want to zoom um, in. Or yeah, and so as long as you have a good, uh, I don't know if it's the optical or digital yeah. zoom on your camera, um, you can still get quality if you're zooming in. Yeah. So, um, but there's no necessarily you know, it depends on what you want to take pictures of. To buy a new camera, but it's, it's really up to you. It, I will say that you're going to have some amazing, amazing photos. Photo ops. Well, photo ops. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you kind of just have to decide on your own, you know, how much that yeah. means to you. Yeah. You know, if you're more you to the spend. nature in the photos, maybe you upgrade. If it's just more about having taking pictures of you guys um, in Alaska and having a good time, the phone will work fantastic. Yeah. So, okay, next question, Mitch Henderson. We are considering booking our first cruise. How far out should we book? Are there any benefits to booking early or is it cheaper to book closer to the cruise? Do they have discounts as it gets closer to your sail date? Oh, okay, well. That's a good question, the, Mitch, the and make sure best, if you didn't see our money saving yeah. uh, video, check that out because we talked a little bit about that in that video. The best time to crew to book is early 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 like two years early if you can that is going to be your cheapest rate um they do offer some discounts as it gets closer they have like um i know carnival has like a pack and crew pack and go um the other cruise lines have something similar although nowadays the ships are pretty much all sailing at full yeah full um occupancy so they don't offer as many good deals as they used to when yeah. as it gets closer i mean if you don't care what ship you're on so, or where you're going then maybe last minute you might find a deal if they're just trying yeah. to fill up some but space. i was i can almost guarantee that the last minute deal is not going to be quite as cheap as if you booked like two years out or way out yeah, so and I when you book out, early. remember when you book early, then you have the chance to get um, take advantage of any yeah, rate sure you book in reductions. The, the right you know, rate while you're going, so that you can get the reductions as well. Okay, next we have Kim Shelton. Is the steakhouse on Carnival worth the price? Well, I would say it is, but I guess it depends how you look at it. Um, it the steakhouse is amazing. It is. Yes. It, I can't even say enough. It was like just perfect um we paid 35 dollars a person it was well worth a, a meal 35 dollars a yeah. person if you were at a, a fine dining restaurant and there's and you don't have to tip was, or anything like that it's just well, a flat 35 dollars a person yeah it, it, it is 35 but you should leave a little tip after you know Hold you on should a second. Leave a tip. did we tip or we didn't yes tip? we did tip yes we did oh we you did should tip. Tip. yeah you should tip them but that's kind of after the fact. You leave that. Not you, All right, the, I stand corrected. My bad. <laughs> but um, it, it's amazing. It is definitely worth it. <coughs> it kind of just depends on, you know, how much yes. your budget and what you have to spend. The but service it, was awesome. The food was awesome. But it's definitely worth trying at least once, yeah. I would say. And keep in mind that um, on Carnival now, there are some selections at dinner um, that kind of come from the steakhouse yeah. where you can get uh, something that's uh, on the steakhouse menu, pay a few bucks extra, and they will bring it to the main dining room. Mm -hmm. Usually about three or four things each night are available, so keep yeah. an eye out for that too. Yeah, you can do it. Also, kind of just test it that way too. Okay, this is our last question. It's kind of a two-parter. Um, okay, from Paula Sanders. Paula. I enjoy watching your vlogs. I have a couple of questions. First, I was wondering what y'all do for a living. Paula, are you from the <laughs> South? I'm just curious. Are y'all both in travel or is it just a hobby? Well, <coughs> we, we've gotten this question a few times, people wondering what we do. Um, it's not just a hobby, but um, it's not our main, um, I guess, occupation. Jamie's into retail management. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a nurse. Um, I started um, getting into the travel, becoming a travel agent because we do love to cruise and travel so much that I figured down the road maybe that would just be uh, more like a job when I retired and just continue to do it because I just really enjoy it so much. Um, but my main job is a nurse. I just I work a couple nights a week though, and then I also pretty much do the travel full time. I'm available. 24 7 seven days a week for the travel as well so it's kind of like 
kind of like have two jobs. Right, two jobs, I guess. It rings in the middle of the night, you're going to answer. <laughs> I know. So I kind of like have two jobs. But I do work night, night shift, um, a couple nights a week as a nurse. So there you go. There you um, go. Well, yeah, I mean, listen. That's, what, that's what we do. We, um, um, and we love to vacation and cruise. And, so that's and it was how part of that that kind of started that whole travel thing, I think, for Sharon was... Um, we spent so much time talking to people and our friends about cruising and what we love about it and explaining how affordable it really is if you do it right. And, and so many people, when you tell them you're going, you cruise a lot, they think you're made of money and it's just not the case. Yeah. It's cheap as or cheaper than any other land-based, uh, you know, vacation you're going to do out there for, you know, for seven or eight days. Mm -hmm. um, and so we explained that to people and they're like, wow, you know, uh, a lot of people were listening to us and taking our advice and trying cruising, our friends and family. So we figured, hey, maybe we can do yeah. it as a little business well, we figured deal. we'd kind of get into this, too, and kind of mm -hmm. help everyone out with questions. And, yeah. and so we love talking know. about it and helping people, and if yeah. they can find it as so, fun as we do, then uh, yeah. that's fantastic. So this part of it, I guess, the YouTube and some of this stuff is somewhat of a hobby, I guess you might say. We just enjoy doing this, you know, helping others and just talking about cruising. Yeah. We love it. So there you go. Um, let's see. Her second question is also... I am going to Cozumel for the first time next month, and I hear beach clubs are the thing to do there. I will be bringing my two boys, 12 and 14. Which of these do y'all recommend we do? Nachi Cocon, um, Mr. Sancho's, Playa Mia, or Paradise Beach Club? Well, um, we have actually done two of the four ourselves. We've done Mr. Sancho's which we love. I highly mm -hmm. recommend that. It's amazing. We may and, be going back there in a couple months. And we will months, be back so there in October. Um, we've also done Paradise Beach Club, which we loved as well, too. It's just different. Mr. Sancho's is all-inclusive. Paradise Beach Club is not. Um, but is what I did is I put together a little slideshow with some information about all four places for you so you can kind of make your own judgment um, on that and decide what to do. I will say Playa Mia tends to be a little more for maybe younger kids, it looks like, and Nachi Cook Home, um, you get a little bit more of an, an older crowd there. So with that being said, you know, watch the rest of this video and make the decision for yourself. There you go. There you go. All right, first up, Playa Mia. Playa Mia is a great place to go if you have kids, especially smaller children. They have pools, a nice water park with a variety for all ages. Playa Mia sits right on the beach where you can soak up the sun on a lounge chair in the sand if you choose. They also have a variety of inflatable beach toys for the kids and adults to play on. They offer a buffet meal which includes your typical Mexican buffet items and the drinks are average to good. Here is a price list of all the current prices for the day passes. You can stop it, take a screenshot if you like to save for yourself. Um, also, if you definitely, I would definitely recommend this one if you are traveling with children. Next, Naki Capone is a nice all-inclusive beach club. It is open Monday through Saturday from nine to five. And if your cruise ship comes in afternoon, they will stay open until 6.30 that day. It is located on the beach and like the other beach clubs, has a pool with a swim-up bar. The basic current prices are for anyone over 16, 55 per person, ages 12 to 15, 39, ages four to 11, 19, and three and under are free. They also offer snorkeling, massages, banana boat rides, towels, and more for an additional charge. Nachi Kakom is a very nice relaxing place to visit, although it does tend to be a slightly older crowd at times. Next, let's move on to Paradise Beach Club. It also has a beautiful beach area with inflatable toys for the kids for an additional fee of $18. There is a nice large area with a swim up bar. Food and drinks are a la carte. The food is good and reasonably priced. You will have to take a taxi to and from the beach club, very similar setup to that of Mr. Sancho's, although it is not an all-inclusive beach club. Anyone can enjoy the amenities here just by purchasing food or drinks. 
And once again, the fun pass for the inflatables, kayaks, and snorkeling gear. Oh, and they also offer stand-up paddle boats. The fun pass is $18 per person. And once again here, take a look at the menus and you can take a screenshot if you'd like or stop it and take a screenshot and have them for your own records there. And now let's move on to last but not least, Mr. Sancho's. Mr. Sancho's actually has two sides, an all-inclusive one and one that is not. The current price for the all-inclusive is 55 per adult and half price for kids. It includes all food off the menu, a buffet, and unlimited free-flowing drinks. And I mean free-flowing. There is a great beach area with inflatable toys, cl um, infl inflatable climbing wall, rock walls. Um, and it's just, it's awesome. There is an extra fee of $12 per person to use those amenities. Along with that, they have a nice pool and a swim-up bar. The pool isn't huge, but we've never felt crowded there. The staff are very friendly and easy to please you, eager to please you. The non-all-inclusive side, you just have to purchase food and drink as you go. The sides are separated because the all-inclusive side has a limit to how many people they will let in for the day so you never feel crowded. Once again, you take your own transportation to the beach club. You can reserve online at mrsanchos.com and pay $5 to reserve your space, then pay the balance when you arrive. All right, so we hope some of those uh, um, photos and things helped you make a decision on your beach club choice. Remember, book ahead of time, make a reservation so that uh, if that thing you know gets filled quickly, you're still locked into uh, spending the day there. And I think that's about all we have for our questions. We've covered a bunch of them today. I hope you guys got some information out of them um, and uh, that you know things were you know it was a little bit helpful and uh, helps you to have an awesome cruise next time you go out. That's right. And we will be back next week with our regular vlog. And I have a feeling we might have a little vlogging from Matthew next week. He's been you think so? To, He's going to get on with the action? We might. So we'll mm, see. We'll okay. see. I'll be, have to Maybe a special appearance. This, hey, this time we had a special appearance by Lucy. <laughs> We'd like to thank her. Um, right. uh, and her, her check will be in the mail. <laughs> in the form of some milk and, and dog biscuits. <laughs> And let's see, two weeks from now, we'll be back with some more Q&A. We're going to try to start doing this, like I said, every other week, the Q&A. Yeah. Um, and just keep those questions yeah. and comments coming. As long yeah. as people are watching and you're commenting, you have questions, we'll keep on doing it. So we oh. sure appreciate uh, the love that you show and uh, all the questions you put out there. So well, thanks there a lot. There you go. So until next time, happy cruising. Happy cruising.